Hello. Here we'll talk about what is called the sign of a permutation. So permutations are not all made equal, some are more even, some are old. So let's um, start with a sort of practical, more or less, way of computing the sign of a permutation, say of n things. Uh, that will be um, plus or minus depending on the parity of the number of simple crossing in in a graph of sigma. Uh, so what I mean, uh, let's imagine a permutation, say one. Two, three, four, one goes into four, two goes into three, three goes into two, four back into one. Um, if um, you prefer cyclic notations decomposed into independent cycles, we'll have two cycles in the decomposition. So one goes to four and back, first transposition, the second is transposed into n3. Um, what I mean by a graph, yeah, I'll just take my four element set upstairs, downstairs, and connect in the permutation pattern. One is connected with four, one goes into four, two with three, three with two, four with one. So that is a picture, well, more or less all intersecting at one place. That is not a simple crossing, a simple intersection. Simple means that only two strings intersect at each intersection point. I can always perturb by making my strings elastic and moving them away from bad intersection points, say keeping these two middle strings intersect in the middle, but then two other will just go around it. So that is again a picture for the same map. Nothing changed apart from my way of drawing it. But uh, this now is good for counting. This uh, now have all the intersection points being simple, only two strings intersect at every intersection point. And the number of such crossings is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the sign of my permutation is positive 1. And um, um, that is practically more or less good. Not the best, probably, way, but um, still okay. But uh, it's not terribly good to be used as a definition because I can draw my pictures in many different ways. So there is a question of why the answer will not depend on the way I draw a graph. So here is a um, little trick which um, argues that, yeah, it will not. Uh, it actually employs something totally different to what we deal with. It, um, um, this trick um, employs polynomials, or functions in general, of n variables, as many as we permute, because we're going to permute this variable. So let's imagine this function, well, polynomials are enough for my purpose. Uh, let's um, define um, for a permutation sigma an arbitrary permutation of one things to find new function which will be the old function f where I instead of x1 I will put x with the label sigma 1 and instead of x2 in place of it I will put uh, x with the label sigma 2 and so on till the very last label. Um, so here's an example uh, let's say imagine just two variable polynomial which will have x1 squared plus say x1 x2 go to something really simple then um, well the only interesting permutation we have for two things is a transposition and let's see what the result of um, applying it reshuffling variables um, according to this transposition, basically changing the roles of x1 and x2. So that would uh, literally be replacing all appearances of x1 by x2 and vice versa. We transpose their roles. So that will be the polynomial 
um, which will be the result of applying permutation 1, 2 to the, the original one. Okay, so with this, let's um, now consider a very special polynomial in n variables, which will be the product of uh, the differences of different variables and taken in, um, in the natural order of those variables. So that is a very special polynomial. It appears in uh, different forms in many parts of mathematics. But for us, it's going to be a definer, uh, the definer of the sign, because now we could look at what happens when we take a permutation and permute um, according to this permutation the variables inside this polynomial. So I claim that the result will be just the same polynomial up to plus or minus, and that plus or minus sign is just the sign of sigma. So why is it inevitably the same uh, up to a sign? Well, just look at what uh, this delta polynomial is. It's a product of differences of different variables taken in some prescribed order. When I change um, the names of my variables, I will still have um, the differences of different uh, variables. That, will not go, that is not going to change. But uh, the um, order in which they appear in the differences might be flipped, so the minus sign will, um, uh, will come from that, uh, and it might come some number of times. So that's why this inevitability. But just having this rule that uh, there will be a sign appearing in front of delta if we shuffle its variables according to the permutation is enough to see that this number doesn't depend on anything on the way we um, write this polynomial, we choose any order, it's still going to be the same. And that is a better definition than this graphical definition for what the sine function is. And also this, um, um, this rule makes it easy to see that uh, the sine of a composition of two permutations is the, is the product of their signs. That follows from just the general rule what happens when we um, uh, shuffle, uh, reorder perm, um, variables in, in, in the polynomial. So let's take, say, composition of the permutations and then I just imagine what happens and I claim that it, the answer will be um, the same as if I do it in steps first um, applying permutation sigma and then applying permutation tau and each time I do that with my delta polynomial the sign appears and then on one side it will just be the sign of the composition of two and on the other side of this equation for uh, when f is delta, it will be uh, the product of two signs, hence this rule. So, um, more information about signs of concrete permutations, let's, um, yeah, very persistent insect. Let's look at what is a sign of a cycle of length L. So we can um, you say this graphical intuition and imagine a picture with simple crossings representing this permutation. The permutation moves 1 into 2, 2 into 3, and all the way up to L minus 1, which goes into L, and L itself goes back into 1. So this is the picture, and all the crossings in this picture are simple, and if we count the number of them, there will be as many as L, but without 1, because this is the last L string and that intersects all others and the number of all others is L minus 1. So that will give the answer the sign is negative 1 to the power length minus 1. And you could really convince yourself that it doesn't matter what the elements are in this cycle, it's just the same answer for any content in the cycle. Uh, the sign will only depend on the length of the cycle. Well, just doesn't matter what the names of the cyclically permuted elements are. 
it's only the number. So that, um, together with this rule, gives a perhaps better than graphical um, practical way of computing science. So let me do an example. Um, imagine a permutation and compute its sign. Uh, say, uh, write it first as a table. One, two, three, four, five, say six. And then go into three, five, four, see, um, yeah, what do I want here? Um, six, two, five. Something like that. So, um, what I can do is to write this permutation as the um, product of independent cycles. One goes into three. Put into two, three goes into four, four goes into six, six goes into five, five goes into two. So in my example, I just have one cycle of length one, two, three, four, five, six. So the uh, sign according to this rule is going to be negative one. Let me do maybe another, maybe less um, trivial example having more independent cycles, seeing what to do with um, with that situation. So again, I'll just take three, uh, maybe also um, five, four, put one here, and two, and say um, six. And that um, decomposed into independent cycles. I'll start as before. One goes into three, three goes into four, four goes um, back into one. So I have my uh, first closed cycle. I have to continue starting with two, two goes into five, five goes back into two. So I have a transposition and then six is fixed. Um, so that is a cycle of length one which Usually I shouldn't really record, but I'll just record it for completeness. So then, uh, according to this rule, this is as good as a, composi as a composition of those cyclic permutations. I can break uh, the sign computation into computing three signs and I'm multiplying them. And then the sign of each cycle is determined by its length. So the length 3 minus 1 is the exponent for the first sign. Then I have uh, 2 minus 1 and I have, yeah, being pedantic, 1 minus 1. So you, if we collect everything, see what happens. So we'll have even number here, odd, and even again, so the total effect is negative one. So this permutation has sign negative one. Let me finish by introducing a subset of all permutations called the alternating group. Uh, it's called group because it will be closed under the composition. And the rule we select permutations for this subset will be uh, the sign. Uh, they will have sign uh, plus. They're called even permutations. And as I said, it is closed under the composition, which is just a part of this rule. Uh, positive sign, positive sign, compose into positive sign. And uh, the last thing I want to do in this video is to count the number of them. So the argument I'm going to use is quite generic, but it will be just applied to the situation. What I'm going to claim is that the number of even permutations will be just half the number of all will be n factorial divided by 2. So let's see why is, um, um, why, why is that. Um, for any n. Well, let's imagine an odd permutation. The simplest odd permutation will be just a transposition, but let's just fix it once and uh, for the rest of this story. Let's make it 1, 2. So the transposition 1, 2 we're using, and then we're multiplying with it from one fixed side, side say, from the left. We're multiplying any permutation in our permutation a group of fine things with the transposition 1, 2. According to this rule, the transposition 1, 2 put here 
uh, is um, of negative sign, so the sign will change. The sign of the product will be different to the sign of what we have. So we will uh, this way we will turn even permutations into odd and vice versa. And moreover, doing twice this multiplication by the transposition will be doing nothing with any permutation. So that's supposed to convince you that we have a bijection between even permutations and odd permutations. Hence, they have the same number of elements. Hence, the total number of elements have to be equally distributed between the even and the odd. And hence the answer. So that is my last um, fact in this video. See you later.